Hello everybody and welcome to Gaming with Vindicator where we're building the city of Michaelsfjord and in the last episode we built this community of historic Homelvik on the island of Homelvik and this was really my attempt to make use of some of the new uh, assets in the DLCs which includes the uh, hotels, the seaside resorts and the uh, pedestrian areas which I think is working out quite well. We've got a really quaint thriving community here, we've got some beautiful assets that we've used to take advantage of the walking pass and we built the the neighborhood of uh, I think we called it Uckleburg which is still flushing out with some residential we're a little bit low in demand and we've built our hotels all the way down the coast on both sides uh, we've got a very exclusive uh, community that's been here for uh, a couple hundred years actually uh, at least in the game lore and uh, we're going to be building it out. One thing I really wanted to do last time was to uh, do a little bit of detailing. The episode got a little long, so I kind of cut it short, but uh, we're gonna take care of some of the things that we uh, missed last time today. And we're gonna start by putting in a pathway behind these hotels on both sides for walking. And we're going to do some trees. So let's uh, put that in really quick right now. actually going to come a little bit across here and give these hotels a little bit more privacy so that they're not affected by people walking behind or uh, driving on the road. Let's do the same on the other side. And there's a perfect opportunity to connect up these paths to the park. Wonderful, that'll leave uh, people a little bit of option for walking paths and we're going to do a little bit of uh, the same thing on this side. If we can get it in without destroying something, we'll give the, uh, the people at the beachfront here a little bit of an extra walking option. There we go. And let's get the trees in now. Alright, how do we like that? I think it looks a lot better. It gives these hotels a little bit more beauty, a little bit more uh, exclusive feel. They're definitely more secluded and in the woods now. And they're also blocked off from the, the sort of whatever is happening behind them or, or what I'm planning to put behind them. And all I did was I went with three different kinds of trees and, and littered them in, tried to clump them in sort of stands and not to be too um, uniform with them. but. Uh, you know, I think uh, once we start fleshing out the rest of this island, it's going to look really great uh, to have this, this detailing here. You know, detailing, of course, does make or break your, your community. So, all right, what's next? Uh, I think uh, we want to take a look at our road structure and we want to make sure that everything's working well. So what did I do here? Um, you know, the roads look fine. Yeah, one thing I did want to do was upgrade some of the trees over here. So we'll be consistent with our young lindens. We are using um, the new trees from the, one of the content creator packs. And we'll just upgrade this so that we're really trying to give this community a feeling like it's uniform, like it's a whole, uh, consistent. And I'm not sure why I didn't add trees on these side streets, but let's do that by uh, putting in the trees with roads. So if we head over here, we find our cobblestone roads. There we go. Small cobblestone pedestrian street with trees. We're gonna upgrade these because it'll be beautiful. Great, I think that looks a lot better. It gives this community a little bit more uh, of, a, of a feel. It's a little less bare. Let's check, I'm curious, what is the land values here? 108 cells per square meter. That is fantastic. It's showing you the power of this this DLC uh, really does uh, spike your land value when you create a pedestrian area. Okay, great. 
The other thing I wanted to do is prepare this main road here. This is going to become, well, it already is, but it's going to become more important as our main artery through this whole region, uh, the in and the out. Now, I've made it a priority road so that I don't have to adjust the junctions every time I create an intersection. However, as we know, once you do that, you're creating weird stop signs in unusual places. So I'm going to keep that off for a while. We don't need any lights for now. <clears throat> I, might just, I might just keep them all off until we need them. Uh, we certainly don't yet. There's not enough traffic to justify it, but as we go along, we're definitely going to be creating a lot more traffic, uh, especially uh, by the end of this episode. So, all right, we fixed our junctions and our signals. And the next thing we want to do, uh, one of the highlights of this episode for me anyway, is going to be to take advantage of this very fertile, lush farmland. And um, it's, you know, I, I thought, okay, we can put some regular farms in here, or we can imagine this is becoming a vineyard. And I think it would go a long way to spiking the tourism draw in this area. And uh, we're going to pretend that some of our uh, farms are vineyards and we'll, we'll just create that extra draw for tourists. So let's get that, uh, that road in here. And I'm going to make an executive decision that I want to take advantage of some of this farmland. So we're going to back this off. This was our boundary for our park area that is this beautiful uh, mountainous area but I think I do want to take advantage of some of this so we're going to uh, reclaim some of that land that was part of the park and we'll go straight up the hill not not too too far but just enough to, to take advantage of some of that farmland. There we go. And we'll fix up this road here. So of course, in order to start a farm area, we need our, our farm main building and our zoning. So before I do that, I would like to ensure that we've got a frontage road in here, uh, which I think we're gonna put uh, just five squares off the main road so that we can put a fence along the avenue. I don't want that uh, anything to load off the, uh, the that arterial there. So we're gonna just come out uh, 30 squares each and we'll see if we can fit our main building in here. And I think it makes a lot of sense to put that there. Now, of course, we're going to have to just reconnect the power uh, as I pause for a second to ensure that uh, we're not uh, disconnecting anybody. And, of course, I put this so close to the road that I can't actually get the power, so we'll just have to temporarily go across and reconnect it. There we go. Uh, these power lines will become obsolete as soon as we have uh, enough uh, other buildings in here to just make the power jump. But let's get some vineyards in here. What can we use? I think we don't want these massive crop areas. This is not going to be an industrial area. And of course, we'll need to expand our, our farm area just a little bit. So let's do that quickly. And I've extended this out just a little bit because I know uh, I'm going to do something with that eventually. Let's get some vineyards in here. And we'll just line them along this road. I think we're getting the maximum efficiency out of these. I think I can even get one more in here. I might have to move my road just a little bit. Um, we'll, we'll adjust that just slightly. And then I want a junction here, which means I'm gonna have to back this off just a little bit. Just come out that far on both sides so we know what we're doing in the future. And then I think, you know what, it might just be fine to, to connect the rest of this as dirt roads. We might not need the capacity and we'll downgrade this a little bit just to be a little bit more rural, to feel like a, this is a little bit more of a small community than some industrial area. I'm gonna want one more junction off uh, this direction, so we'll make sure that we can actually squeeze that through. We might want a road back here as well. Okay, now I admit that is a lot of vineyard. We've put in a lot of production capacity and it's gonna be a challenge to figure out what to, to do with that eventually. Now we've also got some a little bit of, uh, of issues here with the terrain, which we'll fix. But for now, I think let's, uh, let's do something fun. So um, I've been playing with this and I've been wondering what is the most likely to resemble grapes? And I think the answer is potatoes. If we zoom in on this, you know, um, hey, that, that could be uh, grapes, grape bushes, right? Sure, why not? Um, I don't see any potatoes, do you? No. So we will we will put in mostly potatoes up and down here, uh, but I also want us to have at least one greenhouse in each little patch over here. 
just to mix it up a little bit. Okay, excellent. That is now our green, our vineyard area. This this microclimate is actually uh, perfect uh, for this uh, this type of use. And you might be asking, you know, this is a Nordic build. How is it that you're you're uh, growing grapes in an area like this? Well, the way I'm justifying it is that you know I've heard that in northern Scotland there are palm trees, and the reason for that is the way the ocean currents and the winds work to create a very um, very nice climate in, in parts of northern Scotland where where uh, you know tropical palm trees can grow. grow. So uh, this is the same thing. We have a really perfect uh, microclimate here and uh, it's allowing us to put in a, a uh, industry that uh, is definitely supporting a lot of tourism in this area but also um, the production of, of grapes for, uh, for selling and exporting and, and for making wine. So let's, uh, let's finalize this area and get some pipes in. And let's fix some of this, uh, this terrain stuff that's happening here. That looks better. So, okay, I'm quite happy. It's uh, it's turning out, but what we need still is some barns to store this these goods because these guys are going to start complaining pretty soon. They have a long way to go to drop this off anywhere for, uh, at a processing facility. So, as a bit of a stopgap measure, we need to get in some barns to to store all the, these crops that they're producing, aka grapes. And, you know, it's probably not realistic to put grapes into a barn, but uh, I, I just love this asset. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that. And we're just gonna turn this off so I can actually see what we're doing here. I think we can sneak in one here, uh, another up here. Okay, so I've given us a lot of capacity for storing these, uh, these crops. And I think it should buy us some time, at least a little bit. Okay, so what have we done here? We've created a lot of traffic, right? And where is this stuff going? Let's let's take a look at our uh, routes and we'll see where people are going. All right, so there's a lot of traffic coming in this way. I'm guessing that's trucks that have already dropped off products. There's a little bit going through here. Now, guess what? This is a quaint little village. We do not want heavy trucks going through here. So we're gonna have to create a policy to, to block that from happening. And what I'm gonna do is uh, create a new district and we'll put the uh, no heavy trucks policy in here. And what that, that's gonna do is instead of the, the trucks wanting to go down here and make an easy trip into the uh, industrial area where, where we have ports and whatnot, uh, what we're gonna do is force them to take the other road and the long way and sort of get out of our downtown little quaint city here. So let's put in that, uh, that district. And I've pulled a few names that are Nordic sounding just by going to Google Maps and, and scrolling around and picking the names I like. So uh, for no particular reason, I'm going to call this Likeness. And if you have a better name, I want to hear it. If it's something that is Nordic that fits in the theme of our, our Nordic inspired Arctic Circle map, let's hear it in the comments, please. Let's do this. And let's put on some policies here. And the one that we need, of course, is the heavy traffic ban. And in fact, I'm going to put on the high rise ban. Maybe, well, do I want to do that? Uh, we'll, we'll leave that for now. But I definitely want to ban uh, heavy traffic on this road. So that is actually going to force uh, the trucks from the, the vineyard area to head down that direction and, uh, and distribute some of this traffic better. Because I know that this uh, end of the, the Map. It's getting a little more traffic because it's just closer to everything. It's just a, it's a shorter route, but we want to make sure we're utilizing uh, both uh, both pathways here. Okay, so we've got in our vineyard area. That's going to become a very uh, critical draw for this region for our tourists. But there's something else we want to do. Listen, we've got historic Homelvik here. This is serving a lot of the ultra-rich. Uh, we're talking old money. These are historic hotels that have been here for a few hundred years, actually. And you know what? The city has decided it's time to modernize this. It's time to make this area a little bit more accessible to people of more modest means. And so we're going to Cancunify this side of the, we'll call this the, the opposite shore. And what does that look like? Well, it looks like it's a tourism mega project. We're putting in big, massive hotels here. Uh, we're going to be uh, attracting people of all ages and, uh, and you know, more modest income uh, brackets. So the first thing we need to do is create a collector. 
and we're gonna put that along the beach just far enough away that we can have a little bit of uh, entertainment on the opposite side. So let's put that in now and see how it looks. And I'm gonna to try to use as many straight segments as possible so that there's not too many weird zoning things happening and we'll smooth out the bumps after. But I'm, you see, I'm leaving uh, you know, four units, four tiles uh, on the grass part because we're definitely not gonna to wanna to build anything on the beachfront itself. Now here I might come just a little bit off uh, of my plan for four, just in order to give us a little more space from the train station. And we'll see if that, how that looks. Yeah, that, get, that gives us the maximum zoning behind. In fact, I think we may even have, no, I think we're fine actually, I think that's perfect. And, and by the way, I've given this some thought, should I extend this train line out uh, and then maybe, you know, another tunnel into this area here? Uh, I, I think there's almost certainly going to be some kind of residential community here, but I'm saying that uh, the answer is no. We can't justify putting another rail corridor with a very expensive tunnel down here. Not at this juncture anyway. Uh, we're going to leave that alone and we're going to terminate the rail line here because a community of this size just could not justify having uh, you know, not only a bridge coming from that side, but the tunnel on this side. So it is what it is. Again here, I'm going to get a little close to the beach because I want to maximize uh, the distance I can go with this. And you know what, we're going to come off here, which is the last node before it starts to curve. And we're going to come off just um, that distance, so we'll say actually five, and then we'll, we'll curve it in a little bit more. Now here I want to be intentional with creating a, a junction on this road. And so what I will do is think about the future. So I'm probably going to want another road here uh, for four, uh, spaces off just to give us the maximum zonable. And in fact, I, I'm thinking ahead, I might want this area to have um, a little bit of perhaps warehouses or something like that. So let's just upgrade this road preemptively. So I think we're going to want a little bit of uh, processing capacity and let's see what is the size of an appropriate warehouse just for the future. I'm not going to put it in yet. Um, we don't want anything too crazy big, but I think that might, that might work. Yeah. And then what does that do for our junction? It puts it pretty tight there. So um, I think that actually that's going to work. We are, what is that? Seven, eight, eight tiles off. Good, so we'll put a, uh, uh, the road in here. I wanna make sure that my warehouse fits so that I don't mess something up, and it does, so we're, we're good, we'll leave it like that. Um, I don't think we'll connect that to the highway there, but we will, we will give ourselves uh, just a little bit more space on this side. We'll come out, uh, let's, say, let's say to here. So we get the maximum zonable. We'll actually might wanna give ourselves four lane road just for a little bit more capacity and uh, yeah that, that road is fine that type of road and we'll fix our power so the city doesn't die and now on the opposite side we can come back with this style of road connect in there and hopefully be able to make a nice smooth connection maybe a little bit tight yeah it's it's not going to be perfect so I'm going to back this off we are going to come at this with a curve. It's sort of a very uh, modest curve that will eyeball and point at that connection there. And we'll take our straight road, and you know what? I'm happy with that. That's pretty good. All right, so we've got this beautiful collector, which is going to be teeing into the junction over here. Uh, this I know we need to back off a little bit. Uh, we are going to bring this out more. And I'm just going to use a crutch that I picked up from uh, various other people. I'm going to, to bend our roads by putting in a road. Uh, you know, just you see where the circle ends on that node? I'm going to just draw a little guide there. And this is in order to give myself. Am I in the right spot there? 
yeah, we're, we're fine right there. So this is gonna be able to give myself a node, in which case now I can delete this and the little guide road. So we can come in with our uh, collector again, the curved road tool, and it will be exactly equidistant and we have a nice smooth curve. So I'm gonna do that all the way along here at uh, the places where it bends. Here I'm going to make an exception because we want this junction to line up. I will, I will put a connection here. Uh, I'm not sure that, that that junction might get a little bit crazy. We might delete it uh, down the road, but well, for now, let's let's future proof just a little bit. You'll notice that we have a little sneaky guy over here. It's a uh, heavy truck. Uh, you know, getting around our, our no trucks policy to to come at this side of the map. Um, I, I was aware that that was going to be a thing, so eventually we're going to have another policy on this road with no heavy trucks to force the trucks back to the right side here. So those trucks were wrong to outsmart me uh, anyway. We'll, uh, we'll make sure that they get their comeuppance and, and just disappear. So uh, let's connect the, uh, these back up with a nice smooth curve. Amazing, so now I've got a, this long beachfront connector. It's gonna be the, the backbone for our hotels. On the north, we'll call this the north side, just based on where we're looking at it. On the north side of this road, we're gonna put our, our hotels. The tall buildings is gonna make for a really spectacular uh, skyline, actually. And then on this side, we're gonna put a little bit of light commercial, which is going to be our entertainment district, or our leisure district. And it's gonna run all the way along and act as sort of a, um, a party neighborhood. We're gonna we're gonna abitify this uh, this side of the, of the island. And uh, first thing I want to do is is create some districts. And these are gonna be really long and thin districts because of the way we want the uh, uh, we want the hotels to, to pop up on this side and the, the entertainment on the other side. So um, let's check our zoning for a second again. And we know that we come up for so it's right up to the train station. Is my district tool big enough? Yeah, it's actually perfect. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I think it's just easiest to, to follow the, the edge of the road here while we create this district. I'm only going to bring it up to there because I'm not sure if we want the hotels all the way along. No, I, I'm going to scratch that. I do want this spectacular skyline. So we're going to make sure that the hotels are able to go all the way along. Now, I know from playing with uh, tourism districts in the past, you need a lot of uh, demand to supply all these hotels. So we're going to be very intentional and we're going to start very slow with our hotels. We don't want to make so many that they complain about not having enough customers and then what happens is they, they abandon and they look like these post-apocalyptic uh, uh, you know, dead buildings. So we're just going to be a little bit careful. All right, so next thing we want to do is name this. What do we want to name this? I had a name for it and we're going to call it uh, Narvik. This is our hotel district. And we're going to look at our policies and make sure we have the heavy traffic ban. Uh, what else we're going to put on? Uh, some of the ones that I like these days are for water and smoke, uh, fire, and uh, you know, prefer uh, free Wi-Fi. Why not? It's uh, it's 2022, right? And uh, we'll leave it at that. Oh, style? No, we'll leave it at style because once we apply uh, the uh, the specialization that I want, it's going to have its own style. And how we do that is we go into here, we look for our commercial specialties, and we want tourism. Uh, it dedicates the commercial zones to serve the tourists by providing hotels, restaurants, and other activities. Noise pollution and attracts tourists. Perfect, that's what we want. So I'm giving Narvik that specialty. It, you, know, you see it with the little icon there. And we're gonna do a similar parallel district on the opposite side of the road. And in fact, I, I kind of want to cover the road as well so just so we can block that heavy traffic. I hope it doesn't mess with my other district. Let's test this. Ah, yes, yeah, it's gonna create a problem. So. I've got to actually expand this district just a little bit onto the road in order that when I create the new one, I don't break it. So we'll go here. The nice thing is that when you are holding down the mouse button, uh, it will follow the road. So I'm taking advantage of that here. Now that we've done that, we can create a separate district on the beach and I'm hoping it won't destroy my, it is, it's destroying it, okay. So what to do, what to do? It, it worked before, I swear. Okay, we can just be very careful. We'll start from this end. 616 new students, that's pretty amazing. 
So that, that is a testament to how, uh, how much we're growing in the region. Now this I can put back. Okay, it's definitely that we have an interaction problem. So what I might do is just expand this out just a little bit on the back end. Give this a little bit more on the beachfront so that it's not so thin. And they're, they're still interacting, which is annoying, but uh, we'll try our best to, uh, to coexist. And I want this to come right up to the road just so that anything we zone on this side of the road, it will be a leisure tourism specialization. So I think we're getting it. I think we're going to, to have a nice coexisting of these two districts uh, all the way along. And we broke it, but we'll fix it. All right, that's a little bit messy and ugly. It kind of looks like a bunch of sausages, but we'll make that work. And now we've, we've created our tourism area on the north side. We're going to give this a different policy by coming in here, back to commercial, and we're going leisure specialization, which uh, specializes in leisure activities, uh, have more vibrant nightlife, many options for daytime relaxation, blah, 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 we're good. So we'll give Meadow Hills that designation. And of course, we're gonna rename this. And uh, of course, you know, I mentioned this is, we're, we're kind of Cancunizing this uh, uh, area. We're going to, to give this a little fun name. Ibiza Fjord, all right? For those of you that don't know Ibiza, look it up. It's a good time. We're also gonna go high rise bend on this side of the street. We shouldn't need it because I think it's going to be low density commercial, but uh, I do I do want to make sure that we only get tall buildings on the north side of the road and on the south side it's the, the low uh, short buildings. So, all right, we're happy with our road. We're happy. Uh, we got to make a few additional connections because there's not enough connectivity in this area. So let's do that. And I think we'll leave it at that. I'm being slightly miserly with my my connectivity because i really want to force most of the traffic onto this collector that's that's what it's for right to collect the traffic i did want to have a few little roads back here and, and this would make sense uh, we might connect this but i think that junction is going to get crazy with all the truck traffic and uh we'll see how it goes well if we need additional connectivity we will think about that but uh, as far as right now of course there's no traffic on this road because no, nobody has a reason to go down there the next thing I want to do is give us a little bit of connectivity to this train station. I don't want people to have to walk all the way around, and so we'll put a little underpass. I think that would be the best uh, thing we could do here. The curb of this road doesn't like me, and, and it uh, doesn't like grid as well, so we're going to turn off everything by angle and see if we can just get it snug up to the road there. And we'll connect that underground. Now we have just a little bit more uh, uh, pedestrian love here. This is going to be a very busy area, so obviously we want to uh, uh, to give people the walking option and not have to cross the, the train tracks, which is kind of silly. All right, the one other thing we want to do is, is fence this rail corridor. It's obviously going to be a very busy traffic area, so we want to make sure people are safe. Uh, what kind of fence do we want? I wonder. Uh, park fence is an option. You know, it might actually make sense to, to do something solid in, in order that people don't actually see the train. So what do we have here? Do we like or I don't. That's too porous. The airport doesn't make sense. So, um, you know, I think maybe it's either the zoo fence. No, it's the zoo fence. It's the zoo fence. Let's do that. I don't really want to lose uh, a tile here. Um, might just just leave it I'm not sure well now for safety's sake I think that's probably not the wisest thing to do so we'll give ourselves grid and we'll come all the way uh, as far as, as here safety first right okay so I'm thinking that's uh, that's a little bit safe we can always do the same on the other side um, I don't mind the way that looks okay pretty cool and should we tuck this in a little bit sure why not All right, I think that's uh, that's pretty reasonable. And let's get in our hotels. In fact, before I do that, let's make sure that we're thinking about how we want the rest of our road layout to work. We've got a lot of space in between here, and we don't want to put in hotels until we know where the roads, or at least the road allowances should go. So I think we're gonna continue this off at least a little bit. Uh, we might run a road 
parallel behind here. Okay, so as you can see, I've tried to be very intentional about uh, the, the road layout, sort of maximizing our zoning. I've left a few little empty spots here in case we want to put in something bigger. I've left this little spot open, and um, but we've given ourselves a lot of space for the hotel. So uh, I think we're ready to start putting in a few. Again, we're going to go slow on this. We've got a little bit of demand for a commercial, uh, but we don't want to overdo it. We'll definitely start behind the train station here and get that in. Uh, and actually, before we do that, I want to get some uh, some services in here, some parks and plazas. So, uh, to me, the, it's a no-brainer that we, we're going to need some volleyball courts in here. And in fact, I wonder if some kind of uh, fishing pier or restaurant pier would make sense. I don't want to destroy the, the, the shoreline with something that's ugly, but uh, it would be nice to get a few little amenities in here. Uh, some kind of pier on this side. So I wonder if I could just take this road, come down the beach, uh, let's say, let's say that far, and let's plop in, what do we have? Let's see what we have. Fishing pier, we've got the fishing tours, jet ski, marina, we'll say that restaurant pier, maybe. Volleyball, yes, definitely, and the riding stable and the uh, skate park. So I wonder how does this restaurant pier look uh, at the end here? It's not gonna line up exactly perfect based on the shoreline, but uh, boy, did I nail that distance on the road. So, um, okay, yeah, so that, that leaves us a little bit of uh, a, a, a tourist draw here, which is cool. And as far as our volleyball, I want a few. And to me, it might make sense to plop them at the end of uh, these roads. Uh, but not directly at the end, because I want pathways to be able to connect out of there to what we're gonna, what we're gonna do there is a, um, a, a waterfront pathway, a kind of boardwalk. And so let's get one in there. In fact, I don't want it on the curve. I'll get in here. And another here. I might save this this area for something like a cruise ship terminal so I think we'll leave it there for just for now and we'll get some of our hotels in because we need power in fact let's preemptively put water under the roads here great we've given ourselves water let's give ourselves hotels again very intentional here don't want to do too much and I also don't want to go too far on, on here. I really want these small buildings. So we're going to go with two buys. And we'll go all the way along. In fact, before I do that, I want to get in my pathway. So what I envision here is a, is a kind of a, a gravel path. Uh, actually, no, not gravel. Let's, let's see something exciting. Uh, what do we have that might look like a boardwalk? Uh, zoo path with decorations. Let's check out the zoo path and how we like this. Yeah, I, I think that's the best. I've played with this a little bit already and I'm, I'm comfortable. And let's go right along at the end of these, uh, these grid, the, the zoning. We'll do the straight segments first, connect them up. A little close to the water there, so I'm gonna back it off a bit. Yeah, okay, so we've got our little boardwalk here. We've got our hotels coming in. Now, they might start screaming for clients. Uh, that means, you know, we've got some significant residential demand. We're gonna address that uh, this episode. So, but let's uh, let's keep going with a little bit of our zoning here, our commercial, and uh, make sure that we're creating our entertainment district here. So all of these, because they're uh, they're set with the, uh, the, the appropriate specialization, um, which is uh, the leisure, should be popping up as leisure buildings, and they are. 
Bowling, okay, not the most uh, logical thing to put on a gym, but that's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. Now I know this is going to be a really interesting beachfront and we want to make sure that it looks good. So um, as I said, you know, this is a really interesting microclimate, this island, and so I think we can justify doing palm trees all along. And um, let's, let's do a bit of detailing along this boardwalk. Um, we, we know that we're going to be putting uh, two buys all the way down. Uh, we don't have any commercial interest now, so let's, let's just make sure we leave ourselves some space. Wow, okay, so as you can imagine, work like that in vanilla takes a lot of time, but luckily, luckily for you, I've either sped that up or just cut scened away. So, but I think the results are pretty amazing. Look at this. When you, I, I'm finding at least that when you spend some time detailing your cities, it is absolutely worth it. This is going to be quite a spectacular waterfront. Uh, it's coming together. There's something we can do to make it even more spectacular. Uh, which is to turn this avenue into a tree-lined road as well and get some palm trees in there. And I know this is going to be a bus route, so we're going to go ahead and find our, uh, our four-lane, or rather our avenue with bus lanes. I believe it's this one. Yes, bus, taxi, large avenue with bus lanes. And we're going to upgrade it so that it looks pretty sweet. Great, and of course we can't let these vanilla trees stand. This is of course our, uh, you know, microbiome, so we're definitely gonna put some palm trees in here. Wow, look at that. So we've done something really special here and we've created what, uh, what I would call uh, better than Cancun. Better than, uh, better than anywhere I've gone on vacation, at least. Well, maybe. Uh, but anyway, it looks really special. It's, uh, to me, this is beauty, and it, it is totally worth the time it takes in Venezuela to, to do something like this. Uh, oh boy, I'm really excited. Okay, so how are we doing uh, on the game front? We've got a little bit more commercial demand. We've got a lot of uh, residential demand. So I think it's time to start working on another residential area. And I've got my eye on this section here. There's prime land here behind these hotels and next to the vineyards. I think there will be some, uh, uh, some beautiful neighbors, neighborhoods in here that are uh, quite luxurious. And so we're going to start out uh, with doing a little bit of road layout, come along with the road behind these, uh, these hotels and, uh, and fill it in a little bit and see what we can get in here in the way of um, uh, houses. So before I finalize all of this, I'm going to put in one of our largest buildings, which is the uh, elder care facility, and I might just back it off a little bit from that minor collector there. And of course, we're going to break the power, so bring that back. Ah, we've actually kept the power. We can actually back off some of these lines. How are we doing uh, in this way? Are these connected? Uh, yes, they are. So in fact, what I think I can do is, is delete all of this and hope that we still maintain our power. I think it's fine. It goes all the way across. We jumped here, thankfully. Uh, a couple of our little amenities are not connected, but that's okay. Um, what else? We've got our elder care facility. Um, let's, let's bring a road off, off of here. Now we've given ourselves a little bit of a bigger space here. I wonder if that makes sense to, to turn into a campus. And I know that we're probably running low on, 
on capacity for our high school over here. Let's check, 700. Yeah, we're at about 70%. And how's the elementary school doing? I think that's actually in the middle of town here. Uh -huh, to about, we're about half, and so we're about to add a lot more uh, people to this area. Uh, we're gonna make a little educational campus in here. Yeah, I was just wondering if we could get the large park in here, but it's uh, it's no dice, unfortunately. That's fine. I just I try to sneak him in where possible, but I, I haven't given myself enough room. That's okay. Yeah, my original instinct was right. We want to get uh, want to get space for these tennis courts, etc. Great. So we've created a nice little educational campus in here, and I want to break up this block a little bit. It's, it's slightly large, so um, do we need to? I think it's probably fine. I want to give the residents just a little bit more space here. I am going to go with my instinct and put in one more connection here just because I don't want the residents of this neighborhood to have to use this crazy road. And while we're at it, we're seeing obviously a lot of traffic here. Let's put in one of these new four lane roads uh, because if we check, yeah, it's very heavy. So we're gonna do that all the way up to there. And how's this side? I think we can probably justify putting in a paved road uh, for the next segment here. I hope it allows me to. It does, and for the final segment, yeah, it's pretty heavy as well, so we're gonna go ahead and upgrade that. And I think we've we've done something good there. Okay, wonderful. So we'll put the water in. And what other services do we need on this side? How are we doing for clinics? Let's see, healthcare. Uh, there's one downtown there. There's there's the sports facility over there. Um, let's see how we are doing with capacity. 32 of 100. Um, I'm, I might just leave it for now. But what else do we need? We need we do need a childcare uh, center somewhere in town here. And I, I wonder if maybe you know we just pair it up with the, the elder care. How's our fire coverage? It is very poor, and you know this these industrial buildings require a lot of attention. So thinking we're actually going to, to put a fire station in here somewhere off the collector. Hey, look at that. It fits beautifully off the, the, the frontage road, rather. Um, fix this. Good. That's framed nicely in the inside there. Why are they still screaming for water? Oh, we just missed a tiny little piece here, so let's get across. And there's one thing I want to do before I start putting in houses here, which is create a new district. And we're gonna take advantage of another new asset that's been given to us by the, the city skylines gods, which is the mid-century modern uh, pack. So let's uh, let's make sure we're getting uh, that type of neighborhood in here. Great, so we'll rename this something a little more Nordic, which uh, back to my list of little towns in Northern, uh, I think it's Norway, Karvikhamen. Got it. Awesome. And while we're at it, policies, we are going to look for some more water and smoke detector policies. Again, we don't want any heavy traffic on this road, so we're, we're blocking that from happening. All these trucks are doing what we want and they're going down this road here. That's a beautiful thing. Um, what amenities are we missing? We've got our educational buildings. Uh, we don't have a library, which I think would be helpful in this area. But I don't want that ginormous library in here anywhere. So let us put the new one in here. I want to put it in a spot that's not going to you know, eliminate our, uh, our too much zoning. So I think maybe right here would be nice. It fits snug. Um, it sort of maybe a synergy with the park here and it's not ginormous. Okay, wonderful. Are we ready to start zoning? Let's take a look. I think we might be, but there's one thing I wanted to do, which was add a fence along our, uh, our collector over here. We're gonna use a forestry fence just because it, uh, it's solid. You can't see through it.
And one more thing I did want to do is add just a, another park toward the north end here. And I think a dog park would work really well. We'll put it down here at the end so that we're taking advantage of some of that space that's not zonable. How are we looking? We're looking very heavy on this traffic here, so we might have to do something about that eventually. Just possibly some more connectivity will, will help us a lot. Um, but I think, do we have most of our policies in here? How are we doing, or rather our services? Uh, another police station might just be helpful. We've got this one little guy trying to serve all the, the areas. There's really no uh, service up here, so I wonder if we maybe put one in here. Interesting that that fits there. I'm, I'm surprised that that's, if we're able to put that so close to the barn. I don't like the way that looks, so we're gonna move it over. I think on the corner would be smart. That way we don't lose any zoning either. Great, great, great. What's next? What have we, what have we missed? I think one thing we did miss is uh, crematorium, and that's kind of important because we're gonna have some death care issues very soon. And so, where would it make sense to squeeze this in? You know, it's, it is kind of an industrial building. Um, I don't want to put this in somewhere it's going to be uh, high land value, so I wonder if maybe we sneak this where our police station was prior. Again, that's going to be a little... Yeah, I can allow that. That's fine. All right, and then we're not using up too much space, so... We'll see how that performs. Uh, it might not be enough to serve all of these areas. In fact, I'm just gonna future-proof us and add another one on the other side. Before I forget though, we forgot to set our style, which we want mid-century modern. It's gonna be a modern neighborhood uh, to, to sort of um, counteract with some of the old uh, European suburban style. And crematorium, here we go. On second that I might leave that, we're going to do a bit of a, uh, a campus, a public services campus over here. It might fit better on that side. I think we're ready to zone. Let's get some, uh, some residential low density in here. I don't love that I'm zoning residential quite so close to this corridor, so I think I'm going to preempt myself or, or at least uh, reverse my decision and get that off of there. And we'll just um, we'll keep it on the interior here. I think what we can do is come with our marquee tool and uh, start here. I don't think there should be any negative interactions between the farms and the residential. Let's check the noise. Um, there is a bit coming off of it, but I think it's okay. It's probably from the road. And as far as pollution, I don't think there should be any. No, there's, there's no pollution from growing uh, grapes apparently. So good. Did we miss any spots? Let's just double check. We do have a little bit of an empty space in there, but that's fine. Um, maybe a bit up here. We'll go through here and add some neighborhood commercial. And before we go too far, I do want to add another outlet for some of this traffic. That's not the nicest junction in the world, but we can live with it because I don't think this is going to be a really serious collector. Even though we see trucks using it, I don't think they will anymore now that they have this uh, this road. I'm not sure we're going to uh, four lane that or not, but uh, that should alleviate some of the pressure off this road because it is getting quite crazy. And hopefully we don't see any major trucks using this junction here. I think we're good. So we've, we've addressed all of our residential demand. We have a little bit more commercial demand and I think we're doing a good job, but I want to actually give us a little bit more uh, hotels in this area and we're going to do that uh, in a second. I just want to add a few more pathways through here. So what we're doing is we're breaking up a very big block, not for the cars, but for the pedestrians. and. I wonder, are people using my underpass? We'll have to check that out in a moment. Uh, do we want to add any more connectivity somewhere? I think we might want to just do a path uh, up here. Mm, I don't want to destroy too much usable land. I think we'll, we'll leave that. We won't uh, give them another connection through, but uh, let's put in a few more hotels and make sure that we're getting the desired skyline effect. And one thing I do want to do just for a moment is to put a fence behind here so that we're getting the zoning on the proper side of the road. So it doesn't matter which one I'm going to use. I'm not going to do this uh, for long, but uh, I want to come from maybe here. 
all the way across, and now we've got our zoning on the proper road, which is which is this one. Um, in fact, I'm going to just adjust this even a little bit more so that we don't see any zoning on uh, from this road either. There we go, and we'll come just even back here to remove that, and we'll make sure that all the hotels are going in the right place. Another 70 students, great. We are growing. We are certainly growing. We're almost at 80,000. Uh, which is nice because we've been a little bit stagnant for the last few episodes in population, but we're definitely fixing that today. Amazing. So we've continued that pattern all along where we have the hotels on this side and we've got the, uh, the entertainment district stuff on the other side. Uh, I probably will have just destroyed all demand for commercial, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now, there's a, obviously a very big gap in between uh, these two areas and it's going to look silly. So uh, what I will do is put in a little bit more uh, zoning in here. First, we're going to want a path. Before I do that and go crazy, uh, as I was about to, um, there is another asset I want to put in. It's one of the new assets and it's in the bus tab here. It's this beautiful new compact bus station. I think it makes absolute sense to put this right across from the train station. Uh, I do want to run a bus line before this episode is out and so we'll make sure that that gets in there before we do anything else. And you know what, we also have the uh, plazas and promenades uh, pack so let's see what might be usable there. I think we're, is it pedestrians? No. Aha, pedestrian area plaza. So we've got this small food truck plaza. Okay, we've got the ice cream stand plaza. And I think these are a little bit, oh no, they're, they're an appropriate size. So um, until we place them, we're not gonna know exactly what they look like, but uh, I think a fountain on this road might be nice, sure, okay. Yeah, kind of complements the bus station. And now we've got a little node here, a little corner. Um, what else do we want to fit in here? I think let's run the bus line and I know I want it to be a bit of a loop. We're going to come down this, this avenue here and then loop uh, through Ockelberg and uh, Historic Homelvik and we'll come across through here and, and maybe even get into the, uh, the other side at some point. But uh, what do we need? We need a bus line to go down this road. So we're going to convert it over from a strictly pedestrian road into a bus uh, and pedestrian road. And of course we've been using cobblestone, so I'm gonna hopefully find uh, that one. It should be this one. Yeah, cobblestone. And we shall upgrade this road. Make people terribly unhappy that they're gonna have now a bus down their pedestrian only road. But it's for the best. Uh, land values actually should improve when we start using uh, bus routes here. So let's get this bus route in uh, in a circular pattern around town. We'll start at the, uh, the bus, the new bus station here. Okay, and that's that's a fairly long route. So we're gonna uh, duplicate that and go in the opposite direction. Interesting that the bus has to loop around there, but uh, I can live with that. It doesn't want to make a left turn. Uh, I can't blame it. It's, it's, it's fine. Okay. And as you can see, we've got passengers using our tunnel, which makes me terribly happy. Um, oh boy, I'm really liking the way that this is working out. Uh, let's give our bus line a, a name and a color. How about yellow? That seems like a relatively touristy color. And you'll notice I put biofuel buses because I want to reduce the pollution. However, our closest biofuel bus is like 25 miles away. So let's let's not uh, leave uh, this community stranded. We're gonna start on just a little bit on this, uh, this campus here. We're gonna have some public services in, in here. And one of the most important things that I think we can have on this island is a fire helicopter depot. Because there's a lot of trees and there's a lot of ground to cover. And I'm not sure that we're not going to have a bunch of fires if we don't take this seriously right off the bat. So I don't want it too close to the road, but that should be fine. And let's see, anyone taking off right away? 
So far, so good. All quiet on the uh, the fire front. But uh, we'll pull this back and we'll get a few things in here. The one that I want is some kind of garbage capacity because we've completely ignored that on this entire island. So let's see, I think one recycling center should be fine for now. And we'll go back to our buses and get in our, uh, our biofuel depot so that buses don't have to come from all the way across the universe to, uh, to supply this community. And of course we need water and power. As far as power goes, I'm, uh, I'm not happy to have to do this, but we will have to put in some, some lines along the highway, just for now, temporary. Okay, so we've got some garbage uh, capacity, we've got our bus depot, we've got our fire helicopter, which surprisingly is not being used. We've got all of our fire watchtowers inside the parks covering, I would say, most of the... Uh, let's actually check that. Is it most of the... Yeah, I think we're actually very well covered for the forest fires. Um, <laughs> as I say that, I notice there's a little bit of a, uh, a deficiency over here. So I'm not sure why this, you know, this medium-sized fire station is not uh, taking care of that. I wonder if it's because we don't have a fire watchtower. So let's see if that goes away if I add one. It totally did. Okay, so as we know, fire watchtowers are required for protecting the trees. Great! What's next? I was very rudely distracted uh, with the bus line by uh, from putting in some more uh, zoning here. And what do we want? Let's first of all check our, our parks and see if we need any more uh, plaza type buildings. We're well covered in Aquaburg over here. Uh, our, oh, surprisingly they're telling me that they're not super happy. So I wonder if we want to put in just a few more plazas uh, but where? Where is the question? And you know, I'm very curious about some of these new plazas that go across the road. That's super cool to me. And here's a food truck plaza. That would make beautiful sense to put inside of a uh, tourist area like this. It won't fit back there. I hate to take out some hotels. That doesn't seem like the smartest use of... of uh, no, I don't think we're gonna do that. So let's see what else might fit in here. An ice cream stand plaza that, that hopefully, yeah, that fits right behind our um, path. And is that gonna improve the, the happiness here? I'm not sure that it does. So what else are they looking for, I wonder? Are they gonna tell me? Uh, no, almost five star, great. They're not gonna tell me. So we might just need a few more uh, park areas. It's parks and plaza that we're, we're weak on here. So uh, What is this one here? Small food truck plaza. Let's overlap that abandoned building there And we'll see if that uh, that adds a little more life to the waterfront here. How are we doing for our buses? They're certainly backed up and let's check the line details uh, So far nobody's really using it, but I think we'll give them. Oh, okay. There's people waiting. Oh, interesting, right in, in the middle of our old historic town. So we'll give that line a chance to catch up a little bit. We've got a little bit more commercial demand. Take a look at this. This is exactly what I was hoping to do, is create a, a bit of a skyline. And as things level up, as things uh, fill in, we're gonna see a whole skyline all the way along this collector here. So um, I, I'm gonna just take advantage of a little bit more of this commercial demand and put a few more hotels. The other thing you can see I'm doing is putting just a little bit of high density residential in here. I think it would make sense to, this is kind of a downtown core area. Um, it, is, it is next to the hotel zone, which I think for game mechanics wise is gonna help us a little bit uh, to, um, uh, to, to satisfy some of the demand here. Uh, even though these hotels are looking for tourists, I think in the game, when you put a little bit more residential, it does help with uh, having some, uh, a bit, giving them a bit more demand. So how are we doing? We've got buildings popping up here. Uh, it's looking cool. I like this. Uh, you know, what else is left to be done? We've done our fire helicopter depot. We've done our um, our biofuel bus depot. We're, we're definitely creating something that's looking pretty cool. Okay, I'm actually very happy with how this is turning out. It's obviously a work in progress, but I think for today we're going to leave this here. 
Let's take a quick peek at the skyline. Yeah, I really like that. That's that's beautiful. We have created something that is is a tourist draw, the region over, maybe even for the world. And how's our new neighborhood doing? Yeah, we've got these really cool mid-century modern buildings going in here. I think this would be a really beautiful place to live. You've got your, your educational campus here. We've got a lot of trees. Um, it's still it's still filling out. We're not quite uh, there yet. And on this side, you've got your hotels. It looks like they're sort of isolated. Very cool. I am so excited with how this build is turning out. Um, there are a few more episodes uh, that I'll be filling out this, this island here. Uh, not least of which will be a build to flesh out a park on this side. I'm thinking we need a cargo harbor, some kind of cargo capacity to, to serve the, the goods demand in this area that probably we're not going to be able to satisfy now. A cruise ship terminal, and who knows what else? We're going to build it all out. We're maybe going to give the industrial area here, the vineyards, a little bit of processing capacity on this side, uh, as well as maybe you know some kind of hotel complex that serves the, uh, the people going from vineyard to vineyard. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, whoops, did I miss something here? No, those are our young lindens. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm really quite excited about this build. I hope you are too. There's more coming. It's gonna look really great once we have all these uh, empty areas filled in. And uh, boy, I just I love playing this game and I'm glad that you're watching me because I'd be doing it anyway. Uh, I had a wonderful uh, day to myself today to be able to do this and I'm looking forward to producing a lot more content uh, in the very near future. So uh, let me know what you think. Subscribe so you get uh, notifications of my new content and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.